Good morning, and uh, <coughs> I'm Peter Dubowski. I'm the Dean of the Pontifical uh, Biblical Faculty of the Pontifical Biblical Institute, and uh, I'm honored to uh, chair this first uh, session. Uh, we will go, I would be, uh, I'm honored to present you uh, Father Michael Kolarczyk, who is a rector of the Pontifical Biblical Institute, and he will welcome you. So I'd like to welcome everyone to this international conference, Jesus and the Pharisees. I want to welcome especially the speakers who have come, some from afar, and all the professors at the Biblical Institute and at the Gregorian University who are participating in the conference. It is really quite an ecumenical and interreligious conference, which testifies to the collaboration among scholars of different traditions. Even the sponsors of this conference testify to that ecumenical and interreligious inter -religious aspect. The American Jewish Committee, the Italian Episcopal Conference, the CEI, La Conferenza Episcopale Italiana, Verbum of Faith Life, a digital company in Bellingham, Washington, near British Columbia, not the Washington on the East Coast. They have put together a library of biblical works and programs for the study of the Bible in collaboration with the Pontifical Biblical Institute. And so we're happy to have them also sponsor this conference. Then we have, of course, the Gregorian University Foundation, which has always been a supporter of references and activities that we have in the Gregorian University, the Pontifical Oriental Institute, and our own institute. And then I would like to mention the help that the Pontifical Gregorian University has given us. At first, we wanted to have this venue, since we are celebrating through the, with this event the 110th anniversary of the foundation of the Biblical Institute. We wanted to use the Biblical Institute as a venue. But once we saw how numerous the applications were, we realized that we had to change the venue. And I'm deeply grateful to the rector, Nuno Gonzalez, for his very generous offer to use the Aula Magna of the Gregorian University. And finally, also, the Pontifical Biblical Institute with many of our professors, our administrators, and many volunteers who are helping us in this. So I welcome you all to this conference. I hope that it will be informative, probing, and a great sign of our search for truth. And as I often say every day at the Pontifical Biblical Institute, either to students, professors, or the Jesuit community, I usually end my conversation with people with coraggio. So here I would like to begin with coraggio. Thank you. Our second speaker is uh, Rabbi David Rosen, uh, who served as a rabbi in uh, South Africa, and then he was a chief rabbi in Ireland, and right now he is uh, American Jewish Committee's international director for interreligious re uh, affairs. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, Ambassador Oren, Morai Rabbanai, most distinguished, reverend ladies and gentlemen, and colleagues and professors, and everyone who has come for this occasion. It is a great joy for me to be with you and to participate in this conference, which in fact is uh, the culmination of a seed that germinated some two years ago in a conversation between Professor Joseph Sievers and myself. We have a friendship of more than 30 years. 
in which we were not only discussing the actual subject and some of the insights of modern scholarship, but we were also lamenting a lament that the important milestones, some of those that come from the Holy See's Commission for Religious Relations with the Jews, and I note to Father Hoffman's presence here with us, uh, specifically the guidelines on Nostra Aetate and the notes on the presentation of Jews in preaching and teaching were not necessarily as well known as they should be, even at the highest of levels within the church, where sometimes the caution that are contained within these documents against a prejudicial, uh, um, generalized presentation of the Pharisees has often not been taken with the seriousness or maybe the familiarity that one would have hoped for. And so the conversation then moved to us talking about the possibility of such a conference that would look at some of the groundbreaking insights into the characters, the personalities, and the relationships that, focus, uh, that are the focus of this conference, and at the same time, if you like, revivify a sensitivity that maybe some places hasn't even existed, but in other places seem to, have some extent, become a little bit muted with time, maybe as the impact of the enormous revolution that took place in Catholic-Jewish relations has almost uh, paradoxically become something that we take for, to a degree for granted. So the need to be able to reaffirm those sensitivities is particularly important. It's coincidentally, of course, many of you will be familiar with the fact that just recently there was an occasion with a presidential candidate in the United States who used the term in a prejudicial manner. But it was a testimony to the context that the reaction was as constructive as it was and the um, acknowledgement and apology came forth reflecting, I would say, in many cases, the success of both scholarship and of advocacy in North America, something that I think we need to aspire for for the world at large. Many of you will be familiar with the AJC's pedigree in the field of uh, Christian Jewish relations, or specifically Catholic Jewish relations. Uh, the American Jewish Committee is really the Jewish pioneer in this field, and most notably uh, in our context and in these halls where there has been a particular focus on the historical contribution of the late great Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel, he was able to play that role because he was contracted by AJC as its representative to the Second Vatican Council. Um, and as a result, my predecessor, Rabbi Mark Tannenbaum, was particularly hot on research and conferences that will look at these aspects. In recent years, as an advocacy agency is at liberty to change its priorities, so there has been less scholarly work and less focus on publications and conferences, and therefore the fact that we are having this is of particular joy and of, uh, for me personally. Um, I once again thank Professor Sievers for the carrying through this vision with determination, wisdom, caution, and uh, putting together a most remarkable array of scholars and of insights that I'm sure will be enormously enriching. I thank his colleagues who su have supported and contributed to this, and especially to all the speakers to here and all of you who are participating in what I think is, the word historic is used about a little bit too much these days, but nevertheless, I still think it is quite a historic event. So thank you very much. <laughs> Our third speaker is Professor Josef Siever, a professor of Jewish history and literature of Hellenistic period uh, at the Pontifical Biblical Institute. Well, I know that now I will overstep the boundaries of uh, a moderator, but I have to say when Josef presented this uh, conference to us and we heard it and uh, how it should be organized and what he, w he had in mind, I personally said, this is too much. We won't be able to handle this. And thanks to Josef, it became true. Uh, 
and I think that this conference uh, is not only uh, the result of his uh, fantastic uh, connections and managing skills, but it's sort of incarnation of uh, what he really believes. But I don't think only believes, but what he lives. He stands for Jewish relations, a Christian relationship, and if you realize, in, he started his studies in 1966 uh, at the Vienna University in uh, Jewish, uh, <coughs> uh, Jewish studies, and since that, slowly, but with strong determination, uh, he carried uh, on this uh, project. So, Joseph, we are really thankful to you, and the fact that we are here right now, it's thanks to you. Please. <laughs> I accept these thanks. I don't reject them or say <laughs> it's not true, but I want to pass them on to those who have made it possible for me to be here with you uh, today. And that is my, my family, my community, the Fokodara community that has very strongly supported me in this. My teachers from Vienna and in other places, and so on, and now my colleagues uh, at the Biblicum. And also the people who have worked with me on, on this. It's uh, not possible to mention uh, them all, or mention any individual, but without them, I wouldn't be here, we wouldn't be here. So, th and then the thanks ultimately go to the one uh, Lord who has brought us here together. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Now, uh, just uh, two more words. You have seen the program. I think you have understood how it tries to deal with all the ancient sources about the Pharisees, but not stop there. Uh, then move on. What has been the reception of all these sources and uh, until uh, today? So we'll go through this in these three days. But maybe one uh, word can be of uh, help to us, and that is uh, a word by Augustine. Um, uh, sorry. Nemo nisi per amicitiam cognoscitur. No one can be known or understood if not through friendship. Can we view the Pharisees as friends? Thank you. <laughs>